Hey folks, Phil here. And this is something else I'm working on. Uh, so I got enough already to work on. Uh, the kitchen table's full, so I decided to come here to the coffee table in my bedroom to work on this. This is an MCS Series 6205 belt driven, fully automatic turntable. It's capable of playing 12 and seven inch records at 33 and 45 with the pitch control, as you can see right there. And you see it had a, it's had a rough life since it was built in 1984, I believe. Platter still looks pretty good. Not a whole lot of dirt on that. I'm gonna do some cleaning. It's just a little bit of cleaning. You can see the dirt knobbers have been after it. You can see the platter mat needs a little bit of help. I'm gonna clean this up. Still in pretty good shape, still pliable. Let me pick it up and show it to the camera. You can see the dirt daubers have had a field day with the ins uh, the uh, top side of this. I'm hoping that they didn't get access to the inside of the turntable. It's got some weight to it. Fast forward to 2019, finally getting around. I don't know when that video was, but it was quite some time ago, probably 2014, so five years later. And uh, we're, we're taking a, another look at this um, MCS turntable, which is basically a Technique's turntable for all intents and purposes. Platomat needs to clean again because there's no dust cover. It did come with a dust cover, but I don't know what happened to it. Let's uh, go ahead and take the platter off. The belt that's on here is not the one for this turntable. So... Uh, supposed to go to another turntable that I have. It's a Pioneer turntable. As you can see, I'd, I'd clean the dirt darber mess as much as I could. It uh, still needs a little bit of work. I have some cleaner that I'm going to use for that purpose. Um, just a few minor things that uh, need some attention. I will have to take this apart, though, and make sure that the dirt daubers didn't get all the way inside of this thing. It will also need to be taken apart for a couple of different reasons. The uh, speed control, the repeat, Q, and uh, well, this is probably not gonna be much of a big deal, but I would like to make sure all these are clean, but uh, as you'll see in just a second, this is a problem. I think the pitch control is just a bit dirty and that's why it's acting a fool. Seems to be working now, but only on one channel. And that's because the original P-mount cartridge that came with this turntable when it was brand new went bad. One channel will test good, the other one chested open. So I solved that problem. I placed an order on turntableneedles.com and found this Audio Technica A. 85 EP cartridge made just for this turntable or others like it. Let's tear it open and take a look at it. I'm not really sure how much it cost. 40, 45 bucks, something like that. And here it is in the package with some reading material included that is extraordinarily small and hard to read. Good for uh, people who are older and have to have bifocals or whatever. I'll have to take my glasses off just to read this. And here's the cartridge. We'll put that in later. First, this thing needs a cleaning. The original power cord that came with this was extraordinarily short, way too short. This came with an MCS component system, which included a amplifier, a tape player, and two three-way speaker systems, all made by Techniques or Mashishita Electronics of Japan. I picked up another one that's a little bit longer than the one that came with it. I did purchase another belt that it should work with this turntable. If it does, I'll be one happy man. I tore the bottom cover off and it doesn't look too bad. This on the other hand is a little bit more complicated than I really wanted to deal with, but I will have to take this apart and hopefully it will go back together the same way that it came apart just to get all the crap out of it. I mean, it is pretty disgusting. So, oh, something fell off of here. What was it? A washer. Oh, that's great. All the washers are falling out. <laughs> I have no idea where they're going to, but the washers fell out. So I'll have to figure out where they go. This is great. 
They sure did not want you to get into this control at all. Let's turn the light on so we can shine a little light on the subject here. It is pretty enclosed. It's kind of hard to find a way to get any control cleaner in there. There is this screw, but I don't have anything small enough to actually do that. I do have one screwdriver that would probably fit if it didn't have a big burr on it. Chinese junk. So I've done some general cleaning. I try to detail it with my pocket knife as much as I could. I try to get in all these little crevices, but uh, yeah, it's not happening. And uh, what this thing needs more now than anything is an air hose and some compressed air and a nozzle because it's dusty. Man, well, that's what happens when you when you know you have something that stays in one dusty ass state like Tennessee for. 30 some odd years, 34, 36 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. So yeah, it's gonna happen. Uh, I do need to kind of detail this a little bit more, but I'll get to that in just a second. I think the next thing that I need to do is put the belt on. And what's nice is they include an alcohol prep pad. It's got some IPA on it. And the idea is while the motor is spinning, you put the alcohol pad up against the inside of this drive pulley while it's spinning and clean some of that gunk off. Uh, another thing is to uh, do the same for the outer diameter of the platter wheel where it uh, where the belt actually goes on. And that's next. Now that everything's back together again, I have the new cartridge installed, but without the screw because they didn't give me one. And yeah, you're supposed to keep the screw, but I don't know where that stuff is at. Things like that get lost. So I'm going to spend probably the better part of this weekend looking for the cartridge and its screw, which probably aren't going to be together. So they should be including screws when you buy one of these. Now I'll have to find a way to insert a screw in there that probably won't fit. It's going to be great. So uh, I guess it's time to test this out and see if it works. Uh, but, uh, alas, there is nothing hooked up to it. Well, hold on just a second. I brought the crappy mixer out to uh, do a demonstration. Now, I'm going to try this without ground and see if it works. I probably will, but if I do, I have a way to ground it to the mixer so I don't have any ground loop problems. But uh, I'm willing to give it a shot just to see what's going on, what's going to happen. But first, I need to get a record out of the blue tote over here. Let's go, oh, I'll run into the door frame here. Let's skip, I don't really care which one, just let's see. I know I got quite a few 45s here. Let's just grab the whole lot of them. Kirby will love this. Let's go ahead and put the 45 adapter on here. Yeah, I look like a pro doing this. And uh, yeah, I found the screw, lucky me, it took me no time to find it and about 15 times longer to find a screwdriver that would work. So uh, I don't have a way to audition this. I'm just going to have to rely on the crappy meters on the computer in order to make this a reality. But let's see here, 45. I have no idea what the pitch is. So, oh, that, uh, yeah, that's not gonna work. I need to plug it in. <laughs> I unplugged it. I hear something, and I don't see anything. Let's see here, it's on. This mixer is really bad. Okay, well the uh, the output's not nearly loud enough. Just, it's way too quiet. And I've done something wrong here. Oh. Okay, well that's not working. Still not loud enough. Needs a lot more volume. But it's working. The gain turned all the way up. So I've played a few records on it. I can already tell you, if I'm going to play records while I'm doing live streaming deals, I'm going to have to have a preamp because this ain't going to work. But more than likely, I wouldn't do it anyway because I'm doing this instead. It's working out pretty well. The audio is going from the turntable to the mixer. You can see I have a wire here that I'm using as a ground uh, because there is a little bit of hum, just a tiny little bit. Uh, but when I hooked to the ground, it was fine. 
So it was just one channel affected. I'm not really sure why. These cables suck. They'll go into these cheap ass plugs, but they it won't go into the back of the turntable very well. And I don't want to wiggle it around trying to get a more secure fitting just to break it. So I'm going to have to do some surgery, delicate surgery. You can see that it just got finished playing this record that I've never heard of before, never heard this song before. And I've got this record specifically for this song because it's a one hit wonder, Tom Johnston, Savannah Nights. I've never heard it before, but I uh, just recorded it and I'm about ready to play it back and, and do the uh, RIAA curve equalization job on it, which uh, Audacity does have a preset just for that. See, it's got a little bit of a pop and foot uh, pop problem in it where the uh, dust is in the groove or some dirt. And uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering what that's all about. I'm hoping that's not a computer goof. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I've already transferred one side of this record, but it took me pretty much all day between lunch breaks and naps to uh, transfer one whole side of it. Of course, you're, you're thinking, well, that's really not that big of a deal. Just put the tone on the record and let it go. Not quite that simple. I've used the Audacity program or software to record the output of the mixer, which only supports, interestingly enough, a sample rate of 48,000 samples per second. That is the best it can do. Strange, I know. So I've been transferring all of these to the mixer, and the results actually are pretty good with vinyl that's in really good shape. The record's in really good shape, and it's clean, doesn't have a lot of dust on it. It's going to play fantastically, so it makes sure, uh, or rather ensures that your pop and click removal is uh, done to a very bare minimum. But I'm having to do them manually. It's in a painstaking process. The automatic click remover in Audacity doesn't work at all. I don't even know why it's there. And fortunately, I was given a whole bunch of records that have seen better days. One of them looks like it was dropped on the side and caved a whole side of it in. And then you have ones like this where it's just, I don't know what the heck is going on there. I mean, I could clean them, maybe get them to play a little bit better, and, and it'd be all right. This one looks pretty pretty hashed. Then there are some that I bought at thrift stores and stuff that have been played maybe once or twice, and that's it. And uh, they're really in good shape. Cleaning is almost necessity. Uh, let's see here. I was country when country wasn't cool. It doesn't look like this one's in bad shape. But the first minute or so is dirty. Then there's one like this that uh, I've already got on CD. So there's no point in even having that because I've already got it on CD and it's clean. So I have uh, records. You know, LPs that are in much worse shape than these things are. and They're so hashed, I, I doubt very seriously I'll get any sound quality out of them. They're just full of noise. and Automatic pop and click removals don't work. In fact, uh, there's a guy on the internet that does it professionally, and he gets really good results as long as the vinyl is actually in really good shape. Uh, something that is as bad as some of the records that I've seen in that tote would not even be acceptable. You just can't really fix something that's already severely broken. Kind of like trying to get the extra information that was deleted in a lossy encoding process by converting it back to wave or flack. It doesn't work that way. Once it's gone, it's gone. My company offered CTO or company time off in order to uh, shed some labor costs during slow times and right now is pretty slow. So I took an extra day off without pay because I thought this was going to take a long time because I have other things I need to do as well. But that didn't happen and I could have worked yesterday. This only took like four hours. I was expecting this to take a full day to do a complete cleanup on this, but it's really a super simple turntable. There's really nothing to it. And it took four or five hours. Uh, if I had known that, I would have worked yesterday. Nope, didn't happen. But that's okay. Everything is just fine. Uh, I'm taking the extra day to transfer some uh, music from records and have, so I'll have a little bit of fun. It's always nice to have a little bit of fun. And you can't do anything anyway because the weather's crap. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and comment. Just contribute to my Patreon and follow me on Google+. 
Oh, you say Google Plus is no longer available? What about my Patreon? Again, oh, I don't have that either. Oh, well. I guess a simple like and comment will suffice. <laughs> Thanks for watching.